Hi everyone and welcome back to the latest edition of FS in Focus. Um, in this edition, we're going to look back at 2023, but more importantly, look forward to 2024 and the opportunities that it brings for financial institutions. To do that, I am delighted to be joined by Nick Forrest, who's partner in our policy, regulation and economics advisory team here at Beringa. Nick, it's brilliant to have you here today. Thank you. Great to be here. So Nick, 2023 has been a pretty challenging year for many people. Um, as you think about the year just gone, mm -hmm. how do you think financial institutions have fared overall? So I think it's been a really mixed picture actually across the year. Um, it's been a challenging year, as you say, that um, if, if it, the beginning of the year feels a very long time ago. If you recall, we had um, the, uh, the demise of Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse, uh, the only early part of the year, but that does feel you know, a long time ago now. So I think the sector's done very well in terms of how resilient it's been in these difficult times. I think the, the regulatory uh, framework that got built up after the global financial crisis has put a lot of the whole, the whole sector in, mm -hmm. in a very good place, whether it's capital that's being held by banks, whether it's the risk processes that are now in place across the rest of the industry. And that's really, I think, it helped the industry navigate these uh, difficult times well and actually be more, do more than that, actually, be more of a support to households and businesses during turbulent times. So I think a resilient year, not, not a great year. I think there are parts of the market, like capital markets, that have seen low volumes, low, low market activity. Other parts of the sector, like retail banking, have benefited a little bit from uh, rising interest rates. So a bit of a mixed picture across the sector. I think the key defining thing for me as an economist is uh, interest rates. Uh, that's clearly affected the sector a lot. I think the unanticipated increase in the peak of interest rates across the world here, all, all the advanced economies, did surprise a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's been a big adjustment for the financial sector. Um, and that, I think, has yeah, defined the year. It's been an opportunity for some, but also a big period of adjustment for others. So as we think forward to 2024, where do you see the opportunities for the various segments within financial services? So I think there's an opportunity to um, <clears throat> uh, have a different year in 2024. I think you know, the difference between the two years is, is stark. We had inflation, rising energy costs, um, geopolitics in this past year, and very few domestic elections in the big economies. 2024 is going to look very different. Mm. So I think we do have to plan for a different kind of year ahead. Um, think about the different sectors. So I think from a banking perspective, uh, I would be worried a bit about credits and credit risks with the rising interest rates that always we know has a lag in terms of the effect on businesses and households. So I think the provisioning that goes into the year-end accounts for all the big big banks, I think would be quite interesting to follow that. Um, that's certainly a, a challenge for, for that sector. I think when it comes to insurers, I think quite a lot of the insurers uh, have been able to pass on quite a few of their costs. I'd be definitely looking at a continued opportunity around um, DB pension schemes, so defined benefit pension schemes, mm -hmm. and how they're now pretty well funded, and so could more could move across to the insurance sector. That trend will carry on. And then for asset managers, yeah, tough year in terms of the performance of all the major asset classes, be that equity and fixed income. Uh, I think they'll be looking for a different kind of year and being positioned for a, for a different year when we have yeah, growth on the uptick, inflation carrying on coming down, and hopefully interest rates too. So you mentioned interest rates yeah. there, you know, the big question, the key question, <laughs> what's your, your um, forecast for the year ahead? How do you think things are going to pan out? So firstly, it's great that I think we've got now got the near certainty that interest rates have peaked where they're at. Mm. Um, Central banks have been pretty clear that um, uh, they're not intending to put back rates up anymore. I think Australia might be a slight exception. We'll see what the data does on Australia. Um, so it's quite helpful for businesses planning you know, in terms of knowing that we're now at the peak. Um, the question, of course, on everyone's minds is how quickly before they might start unwinding. And for me, the answer to that question will be held in the or found in the uh, the labour market. Um, you know, last year, I was looking at the consumer market for how that would bring through economic resilience. The year ahead, I'm looking at the labour market. So that could go one of two ways. Mm. It could either be a case of uh, labour markets remaining quite tight, pay running at kind of current levels. So in the UK, for example, we're looking at 7.7% uh, pay rise increase still uh, at this point in time. If that carries on, it's going to be hard for that not to perpetuate more inflation and for central banks to take longer to reduce their interest rates, looking at the end of the year. If things actually slow quite quickly, which in some sectors they are, mm. we are seeing sort of vacancy numbers drop rapidly, we're seeing pay um, rounds drop significantly. If that happens quicker than we think, then actually interest rate rises should be on the cards uh, before the midpoint of next year. Um, and that'll sort of, yeah, determine the, the path of interest rates. But it's a downward path, which I think is positive for businesses to kind of think about and plan for. And ultimately, longer term, we think that the neutral or equilibrium rate of interest rates uh, you know, for the UK is sort of three, three and a half percent, a little bit lower in Europe. 
And so that path or trajectory should be down to that kind of level over the medium term. Don't quite know how fast it'll be. But that should be an opportunity for financial institutions and businesses to, to ride that wave. It's a far easier one as interest rates come down than it has been in the past year in a rising interest rate environment. And think about the, the, the converse side of all of this. Where do you think financial institutions need to be cautious in the year ahead to make the most of the opportunity that's there? So I'd be a little bit cautious around the end of the financial and economic cycle. Um, the beginnings of cycles all happen at the same time altogether. If you think about COVID and you think about Ukraine, it all happened at the same point in time. We all experienced it, uh, the initial stages of those cycles together. But the end of cycles is always a bit messy mm. because you get some businesses that have refinanced, seeing the uptick in demand, looking forward to, to growth. Some though still got those challenges ahead and facing sort of later exposure to, to investment cycles that are a bit, bit behind the sort of curve. So it's quite hard in that environment to work out, you know, which companies are doing well, where the winners and losers are, where the sectors that are, do, that are growing or not. So yeah, be cautious about um, uh, tarnishing every, all your clients or portfolios with the same brush. You've got to do the hard work and work out where are the sectors that are going up, where are the companies that are, are through, the, through the cycle. Um, and there's no, no, no easy way of doing that other than through the um, sort of good, good data and analysis of your, your portfolio and client base. There's clearly opportunity for those that are well prepared yeah. and um, thoughtful about the future. What advice would you give to business leaders in the financial sector as they look ahead to the, um, the year that's coming? So my, my hope is that we, we get to a point where macroeconomically, a lot of the indicators are fairly close to where they sort of should be or the, the long-term norms. We've, we've had the last three, four years where the, the macro indicators have been off the chart and, and businesses have been trying to deal with this macroeconomic mm. and geopolitical environment that's been you know, all over the place. I think as you get to a world where actually inflation returns to closer to normal and interest rates too and growth should tick up a little bit, once you're in that world, I think you can then really think about well, how do we make an impact on the more medium term challenges as businesses, as society, as an economy? How do we invest now to sow those seeds for you know, the true benefits of digital transformation and AI, or really make a, an impact on financing net zero, which has come out of you know, COP28? Or how do we really think about what the products and services we need to service an aging population? I think that's the year where we can really start to make progress on those areas, rather than worrying about the kind of the cyclical swings that we've seen in the macro economy. I think we'd all welcome an opportunity to think longer term yeah. and plan yeah. for the future more effectively, wouldn't we? Yeah. Nick, thank you. Some great food for thought there. So my key takeaway is 2024 is a year of opportunity. Um, the sector has spent many years focused on cost reduction, and that hasn't always delivered the outcomes that our clients have wanted and needed. So 2024 has to be the year where we focus on innovation, getting back to growth and having the confidence to be bold. And that's all we have time for today. I want to wish everyone a very safe and happy uh, festive period. A very Merry Christmas to you all um, and look forward to catching up in 2024. Thank you.